Log entry, the catch Scarlet Queen, Philip Carney, master. Position, four degrees, five minutes south, 150 degrees, 26 minutes east. Wind fresh, sky fair. Remarks, departed Rabaul, New Britain Island at dawn with one crewman in sick bay due to trouble on ship. Reason for trouble, the wandering master and the warlord at rest. hot morning when we slipped through St. George's Channel, Blanche Bay. It had been a long leg and a slow one, down into Simpson Harbor from French Indochina. But now things speeded up. In a day, we had our cargo unloaded into the China traders' warehouses, and on the next day, another cargo was swinging aboard, bound for a plantation on Hull Island in the Phoenix Group. At noon that day, Gallagher and I leaned on the rail, watching the whole town of Rabaul gather at our pier to welcome the tubby little steamer up from Canberra by way of Port Moresby. The crowd didn't mean that anyone of importance was arriving. The ship itself, a link with the outside world, was enough to bring out the natives with their green, blue, even yellow dyed hair. The Orientals from Rabaul's Chinatown. The portly German planters. Enough even to bring Rabaul's never-small crowd of ne'er-do-wells stumbling out of the bars and into the hot sunlight. The excitement was contagious. Red and I moved forward to watch the steamer warp her rusty stern into the dock, squeezing in just off our bowsprit, shaking the queen in her backwash, drawing the crowd to a point as her gangway went out and her passengers started to disembark. Well, that old hunk of barnacle and rust really brings out the town, don't it, Skipper? We didn't get a show like that. Yeah, I would need it as a lean in San Francisco. Yeah, that's right. But don't worry, Red, the queen's prettier. Anybody can see that. Probably leave that beat-up tub in our wake, too, with it. <laughs> the skipper. Huh? On the gangway. Red. No, it can't be. Yeah. There's that Texan mangan trailing along the stern. That's our sin. Yeah. All the way to Rapal to cross courses with our sin. He turned his be jasmine-scented bulk toward us, and we got a better look at that 300-pound profile. Our sin had meant trouble in Tianjin, trouble in Bali. I hoped he wouldn't mean trouble here. His mincing steps brought him closer. He flirted his handkerchief at us. Ahoy! The Scarlet Queen? Ahoy! Uh, a most pleasant coincidence, sir. Most pleasant indeed. I would appreciate two of your crewmen to help me aboard. <laughs> So Mutual continues The Voyage of the Scarlet Queen, written by Gil Dowd and Bob Tallman, and starring Elliot Lewis. The Scarlet Queen, proudest ship to plow the seas, bound for uncharted adventure. Every week a complete entry in the log, and every week a league further in The Voyage of the Scarlet Queen. Bring me a chair, Mr. Mankin. You must see that I'm utterly exhausted squeezing under this cabin. All right, now, don't fret, Austin. I'll get you a chair. Uh-oh, this here chair is bolted down. You're going to have to walk to it. Uh, the most thoughtless arrangement. The cabin of niggers that supports The babyish man. face glistens Martin with perspiration. This is really quite the scent of jasmine filled the cabin. The handkerchief waved. The beady eyes snapped out from the folds of flesh. And his bulk finally settled into a chair. He still looked Chinese, and he still sounded like Charles Lawson. Uh, no, not gentlemen. I must say I am greatly pleased at the twist of fate that has once more brought us together. Yeah, I said it. I said, in fact, to Mr. Mankin as we rounded Vulcan Island, there is a familiar craft. Did I not, Mr. Mankin? Oh, you sure did. He spotted you right now. Um, I'll say, Corny. Hmm? You ain't got a little old jug hid away somewhere, have you? 
My throat is dry and frail, Dad. Yeah, sure, man. Red, you want to break out a bottle? We'll have a round or two. Yeah, I could use one myself. Hey. Well, now, Captain Carney, if I might inquire, what brought you to Reval? Oh, we're carrying cargo now for the China traders. Oh? Uh-huh. Taking one out of here, bound for the Phoenix Group. How about you? You have uh, interests here? <laughs> My dear boy, I have interests everywhere, but not at this particular moment. We are here for a rest. Are we not, Mr. Mangan? Oh, you bet you. Like we say down in Texas, we're money rich and liquor poor and loaded for birth. <laughs> Picturesquely put, Mr. Mangan. As a matter of fact, sir, Mr. Mangan and I were seated in Singapore, faced with the tedium of here transaction, there transaction, everywhere transaction. <laughs> we decided to get away from it all. And I remembered I had a small interest in the splendid hotel in Raval. And, uh, what, dear yeah, me, right. here we are. Are we not, Mr. Mangan? Yeah, just Johnny on the spot. Uh, here's the proof. Thanks, Red. Oh, thank you, Redhead. Hey. 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 Well, here, gentlemen, to the fate has seen us to our juxtaposition. Well, Good bottle, yeah. Red. Now, yeah, I must insist that you join us in an hour at the hotel. It's on Casarina Avenue, right at the corner of Chinatown. Yeah. You know, the last two times we were mixed up with you, Stinky, we had something you wanted. Now, just a minute, Captain. I ain't gonna stand here straddle legs and let you talk that way about all things. Thank you, Mr. Mangan. Captain Carney, I had thought that our association deserved better than this. You will admit that we've always parted, friends. Yeah. Well, all right, I said. We'll see you at the hotel in an hour. Oh, splendid, sir, splendid. We shall have a merry time. Did he say he owned this place? Oh, there he is. Well, howdy, y'all. Oh, Mangan. Yeah, Boss Ben wants you to come on back here where he's at. Come on, it's on the main floor. Oh, and listen. Hmm? He has found the cutest little old southern gal that you ever saw. Southern what? I mean real south. Shreveport, Louisiana. Oh. What's she doing down here, Mangan? Oh, she's a painter. Boss Ben's buying some of her painting. I don't think they're very much, but she's doing it for money, and all saying, well, he's kind of that away now. Right through here. Yeah. She ain't much for thinking, neither. But, yes, yeah, she pretty. Miriam Lou Parmalee. Oh, don't that put you in mind them Louisiana pines? Not yet. I haven't seen her. Well, you're just a cold-blooded Yankee. That's how it comes. <laughs> all right, here's some room. Mm-hmm. All right, here they are, old Sam. Oh, splendid. Splendid, splendid. Hey. You find me surrounded by pleasant things, gentlemen. So I see. How do you do it, Arsene? <laughs> Indeed, at times I ask myself. Uh, this gentleman is Miss Miriam Lou Parmalee. Oh, how do you do, Miss Parmalee? Uh, how do you do, both of you? Uh, Miss Parmalee is an artist of not inconsiderable ability. Oh, okay. uh, see her, Captain, this painting of the natives squatting sullenly in the bush. Is it not a stirring scene, sir? Uh, yeah, that's great. Thank <laughs> you. Uh, she calls it Warlord at Rest. Uh, she refused to sell it to me. Land sake, you know he is just the stubbornest man I ever met. It's sold. I kept telling him that. I can't sell it again. It's already sold. There you see, she is determined to resist me. Well, you're facing an honest woman, Arsene. That's your trouble. Yes, a most puzzling attribute. Very well, I will try to satisfy myself with my second and third choices. Well, I'm sure you'll be real happy with him, and thank you ever so much. Oh, yes, of course. The matter is closed. Right. Now then... I have arranged for a table in the hotel dining room spread for our pleasure with food and drink. I will carry my purchases to my room and join you. Miss Parmalee, I trust that you will accept my meager hospitality. Oh, goodness. I don't know if I order with all four of you men. I I don't know you all very well, you know. Oh, now, honey, me and you ain't strangers. Chuckins, we from Dexter. Yes. And I pledge to you, my dear, I shall be your chaperone. Oh, well... All right. Now, go along now, all of you. I will join you presently. (laughs) Hey, this is quite a layout. That looks all right, mate. Oh, my goodness. You know, I didn't realize I was so hungry till I saw all this food. The table in the dining room was set to everyone's taste, loaded with the best the hotel had to offer. Our sin joined us in about 20 minutes. Ladies and gentlemen, in an effort to provide the crowning touch, I personally went to the cellar to obtain this magnum. Magnum? Mum's very old, Cordon Rouge. Now, 
Let us all enjoy this festive occasion. Oh, it's bubbly. That makes me dizzy. I do. In spite of the fact that our sin had usually meant trouble, we did have a festive dinner. But after an hour or so, I excused myself. I went to the China trader's office to go over some final details on the cargo. It was another hour before I was finished and headed back to the ship. Night was falling when I got there. So I checked and saw the cargo gear was secured for sea. Hatches covered. Everything okay. Then I went into my cabin. My gangway watch, Nielsen, was backed up against the forward bulkhead. Two men had guns trained on him. Two more put the same drop on me. What the devil is this? Sit down. I can hear you standing up. I said, what is this? It could be harmless if you cooperate. I am Carl von Stoughton. I'm glad to hear it. Now that we've met, take your helpers and get off this ship. Don't pretend ignorance, Captain Carney. Your crewman already told me that the Chinese Austin has been here on this ship. That is enough. I don't know what you're talking about. What is this, Nielsen? They don't know, sir. That fat Chinese came down with a package a little while ago. He said you were taking it for him. I thought it was all right to let him aboard. He'd been here before. Yeah, all right, Nielsen. So now you will stop the show of ignorance, Captain, and tell me where is the picture hidden? I'll make sense, will you? I don't know what you're talking about. I don't know about any picture. I thought you would be reasonable. Martin, put him in the chair. All right, sit down. Hey, come on. All right, lay off, will you? Martin, I'll watch him. You and Emil search the cabin. Yeah, we'll search it all right. I hope for your sake, my father, Connie, that they come find that painting. I don't care how far you came looking for it. You're talking to the wrong guy. If we got here a day later, you would be gone. Then you would be the right guy. That our sin is a blundering fool. Well, go take it up with him, then. Uh, look here, Herr von Stoet. The painting. It was under the mattress on the bunk. Why, that dirty Good, fat. let me see. Ah, the warlord at rest. It is the one. Good. Now we have met success. Uh, Martin, the crewman, drive on follow. He hey. won't follow. Hey, stay away from that man. Sit down. Look. I'm telling you, you don't knock my crewman around. Martin! Here! Yeah. Look at him, Emil. I'll put him down. Oh. Oh. Uh, come on, Skipper. Try and get this slug down. Come on. Yeah, go away. <laughs> come on, drink it. Uh. <coughs> you all right, Skipper? <coughs> yeah. So, where's Nielsen? He's still out, but I'll get to him. Where's that ah, sin? I don't know. He left the party just a little while before I did. Yeah. Who slugged you? A guy by the name of von Stott. Give me a hand, Red. I want to get up. Yeah. <clears throat> Who's behind it? Ah, sin? Uh, I guess so. What did they do with that book? <clears throat> that crummy warlord painting he was drooling over. He must have swiped it from the dame's room. And he planted it here in the cabin, and von Stoltz showed up with three gunmen looking for it. What? That that stale picture? That mess? What are they, weak in the head? It's not worth five bucks, much less this, is it? I don't know, but I'm just about ready to go back to that hotel and find out. Which room is our sins, do you know? Yeah, it's 21, right at the top of the stairs. All right. You stay here, will you, Red? Right. Pull Nielsen out of it and see that he stays in the sack for the rest of the night. Okay. I'm going to see what I can do to pay Stinky for this knot behind my ear. no attention to some of them things I'll send, but that poor little helpless gal, that is different. If you... Carney, what in thunder you want? I want to see Fatso. Uh, you make a most opportune entrance, sir. You find me in serious circumstances. Well, you can say that again. And once more for me. Captain, I beg of you, prevail upon Mr. Mangan. He is using me badly, sir. I am in dire need of your help. Help? You want help from me? Well, my dear fellow, is that such a strange request? You darn right it is, Orson. Anybody that puts a poor, helpless little gal on a chopping block like you done, Miriam, don't deserve nothing but a fast kick in a pistol pocket. Oh, dear me, Mr. Mankin. I had never expected threats like that from you. And anybody that makes a pigeon out of a guy after pumping a lot of bilge about sincere friendship rates the same thing. From here to the harbor. Oh, good heaven, sir. Do you mean you've been placed in the position of a pigeon? Yes, exactly. Here, there's not behind my ear. See it? Ooh. One of my crewmen's got one just like it. We got them from a guy named von Stoet, who came down after that painting you planted on my ship. 
He made off with the warlord address? Yes, he made off with it. And the only reason he didn't get it as a gift was because I didn't know where it was. Now, you see, Austin, you stirred up a fine kettle of fish. Yes, I, I must admit, I seem to have managed things very badly. Well, that is just for sure. Poor little Miriam disappeared. Now the painting's gone. It serves you right for taking it off of her instead of being man enough to get it off that Von Stolt. Indeed, I have erred most seriously. Gentlemen, we must regroup. Regroup? I'm going to do it someplace where you aren't. Yeah. Darn if that don't sound like a good idea. Well, Captain some... and Mr. Mangan, my dear fellow. What? The, the situation does not affect the proximity of the painting, nor does it decrease its fabulous value one whit. Fabulous? Why don't we you must stop at that? once forget these slight differences which have risen between us and set out post haste to gain possession of it. I'm sure you're kidding, but in case you aren't, forget me. Well, perhaps if you understood, sir. Understood what? The canvas is in reality an original painted in 1590 by the fabulous Venetian Giomomo Robusti. So? Uh, it was wrested from one of Europe's most famous museums during the last great conflict by the armed forces of our common enemy, sir. It was recently stolen from its South American hiding place, brought here, and its identity hidden behind that gruesome daub, the warlord at rest, which was smeared over it. Yeah, well, it doesn't make me any more interested. It sounds like international law to me, and I had enough even on the outskirts. Well, indeed, sir, you surprise me. I took you for a man of spirit. Oh, don't listen at him, Corny. Thanks, Mangan, I won't. I just want to get... Walk back into that room, Captain, if you like this gun the way it is. Oh, well, von Stott. Don't move, any of you. Move back, Captain. All right, von Stott. My company wasn't any better before you dropped. Over there with the others. <laughs> well, well, I must say, von Stott, that your arrival is in the way of a surprise. I have come for the painting. And I want no delay. Oh, what old painting? This heat's got you low. Why don't you make Thor? up your mind, von Stoltz? I said I want no delay. Captain, due to the possibility that the painting is still hidden on your ship, my men have taken command. What? You won't board it until I say so. Hey, now, look. But, my dear man, I had supposed, since you so forcefully grasped control of the situation, that you did have the painting. I want no talk. The warlord at rest is a safe, and you know it. I removed some of the paint and found bare canvas beneath. A stunning surprise, sir. Is it possible that the journey for both of us has been a wild goose chase? A, a most disquieting thought, is it not? It is not my thought. I have you and another one of your clumsy attempts at deception. I have it from the girl herself. You had her painting copied. Then you led me to the ship. You thought I would take the fake and leave the island without examining it. Oh, dear me, what a brilliant plan. But, of course, sir, that it was not the case. The girl lies. She would not lie with the methods I used to get the truth from her. Well, not that the warm, methods Take it easy, Megan. Watch me, Corny. We're going to take that whole cat. You there. What was that? What did you say? I was just telling my partner Don't here. move or I shoot. I was just saying what I got a right to say about any yellow hound dog that manhandles a woman. Never mind the talk. My papa would turn over in his grave if he thought any son of his and didn't fake his face. Sir. I, I thought it was Texas you. temper and a soft uh, spot in his heart for the southern bell. Until he moved in front of me. Then when von Stoad ordered him to a halt, he stepped back toward me. Until his heels almost touched my toes. He stood with his hands on his hips as he talked. Then I saw why. He inched the back of his coat up with his fingers. So I could see the pearl handle of the Frontier model coat he wore in his hip pocket. I took it out. Slipped it behind me. Well, you just do something to her, you dead. And when Mangan stopped talking, I moved up and started in so he could get the cold out of my hands. It only took a few words. I'm sick enough of this to tell you where that painting is, von Stoltz. And you aren't stupid like the others. But I ain't through yet. <laughs> von Stoltz's right shoulder jerked, then his left. Mangan had put both arms out of operation in the space of time between two heartbeats. Von Stoltz staggered back, hit the wall and slid down it to a sitting position. Uh, splendid, Mr. Mankin. And you, Captain, a thrilling moment, sir. I'm glad we're entertaining you. Well, don't you go thinking I'd done this to help you get that blasted painting off in because I didn't do it for that reason. He's got that poor little gal hid out and I aim to find her. First, I got to squeeze where she's at out of this pole cat before he passes out. All right, no, there, no, no, All right, now. You coming right on in this other room with me, and you're going to tell me where you got that little gal here at it right now. Captain. Captain, with the admission that I've been a dismal failure, I ask one more thing. 
Now what? I beg of you, go with Mr. Mangan. Save him from himself. Realize that suddenly, sir, he has become a blindly infatuated fool. The barbs of Cupid, sir, that treacherous little imp, have bitten deep. You will go, sir. Yeah, I'll go. For one good reason, I'm going to need Mangan to help me clear my ship of von Stoet's gunman. And don't think I'm forgetting that you got me into this. Oh, indeed I shall not, sir. Mm. I fear the painful thought of it will bear me company for the rest of my life. Yeah. Unless you just happen to fall into that painting. Oh, yes. I am quick to admit, as must we all, that final success is a miraculous anesthetic. <laughs> Mangan and I left von Stoet trussed up in our sin suite and went to find Miriam Lou Parmalee. She was staked out in a room on the second floor of the European Hotel. She was gagged and lashed to the head and foot of an iron bed. Her face was bruised from open hand slaps, and her arms from hands that had twisted them. Mark him. But her just spirit was died. undamaged. They knew that any... Well, I didn't think there was nobody so dreadful outside of the storybooks. I was so mad I could have spit. I think I did. Well, everything is all right now, honey. Sure it is, Miriam Lou. Just calm down. Well, if I'd old... had an inkling, just It'll... one little old inkling of the kind of man that I was going to meet out here, I'd never have come. I tell you that I never would have come. Sure they you... lied to me, every last one of them. Well, whoa now, Shelby. You, you're too well, pretty I, to go I, throwing a tizzy I, like this. How was I going to know? A girl would just be silly not to come out here to paint with all the expenses paid just to do a tiny bit of cheating. Like they wanted. Yeah. But if I'd have known about those men, I wouldn't have come. No, I swear I wouldn't have come. Well, he hit me. He hit me and he slapped my face and he twisted my arm until, honest, I, I was just so mad. I was so mad I couldn't tell him what he wanted to know. Well, don't you fret no more well, now, I will Sheldon. so. Miriam I will so. I'm just what, seething inside. Miriam Luke, I am. I'm just... what, what did you do to make them so mad? Why, nothing. Would Why you... not one single thing? Well, I, I tell you that I just decided that if that old picture was worth so much money and they was making me do all the work, well, I just as much right to it as they did. I did. So I just packed it up. I just packed it up and I sent it on home to Shreveport. What's the matter? <laughs> Why, nothing, honey. Not a solitary thing is a matter. Well, after what I've been through, now, don't you think I deserve it? Why, absolutely, Miriam Lou. You know, you, you keep looking at me so funny, Mr. Langan. Oh, that's just my heart looking at you, baby. Uh, you got me looping, darn it. You're so pretty. Oh, now, Mr. Langan, sure enough. He, he's joshing with me, isn't he? Why, Miriam, you've read enough storybooks to know a slave when you see one, haven't you? He's a slave? No, sure. Well, no, you're the kind of a lady that brings honor and glory to the South, honey. Thank you. From sheer natural beauty and nothing else. You know, you could just lead me around with those pretty words like that, Mr. Mangan. I just know you could. Well, I'm going to start in right now. Uh, Mangan. Oh, yeah. Uh, I've got a little job to do with the captain first. Yes, uh, thank you. I'm going to take you to your hotel, and you stay in your room till I come back. And then, then we're going to talk this thing over. Oh, but I've told you everything honest crossed my heart and set me to spin, and I've told you every little thing. There's nothing more to say. Well, don't you fret nothing about that. We'll find something, huh? I'm darn sure of that. With the key to the situation a few thousand miles away from the action, the payoff was simpler than I'd expected earlier. Von Stoet fainted a couple of times on the way to the Queen as much from disappointment at finding no old master under any of Miriam's paint as from the pain in his arms. But Mangan's cold kept him on his feet and later kept him covered while Red and Nielsen and I paid back von Stoet's helpers for the lumps on our heads. Then Mangan escorted them all off the ship. But we had one more visitor later that night. I was on deck listening to the gramophone that's inevitable in ports of Chinese citizenry. And a soft breeze carried his jasmine scent before him. I saved him to climb up the gangway by crossing it to meet him on the dock. Captain Carney, there is great sadness in me. Lost your face again, I say. Please, Captain, I am a successful merchant, sir. And it is most unfair that a man of my stature in the world of business should be treated as shabbily as I've been today. Oh, come on, I say. Everybody knows it wasn't your fault. I think you put up a pretty game fight. Uh-huh. 
even if Nielsen and I were the ones that got hit. Well, I'm glad to hear you mention my valiant fight, sir, for it brings me to the subject I would like to discuss with you. No, what's that? Well, the fact is, sir, that my valiant battle, my never-ending effort to succeed, is at this moment the one bright spot in my life. Mm -hmm. I am determined, therefore, to keep it alive. Captain, I would pay you handsomely for passage to Shreveport, Louisiana, so that I might continue my attempts to gain possession of that fabulous painting, sir, and thereby regain my face and reputation. Can't be done, I said. You refuse me, sir? You withdraw the hand that could help me? Yeah, I have to. Shreveport isn't a seaport. Very well, then. Since both you and the misnamed city are so uncooperative, sir, I shall endeavor to find other means of conveyance. But mark my words, Captain. I am at this moment en route to Shreveport. Good evening, sir. By dawn that morning, we were en route to the Phoenix Group. Picking our way out through Blanche Bay, past Vulcan Island, and into the wind that swept around New Britain. Stand by to make sail! The crewmen jumped to their stations, flexing fingers still stiff from sleep, throwing glances back at the island looming on our stern. Make sail! Strong bodies leaned on the halyards. The whiteness of the mainsail slid smoothly up into the dawn sky. The jibs rattled up. Then the mizzen swung out. And the Scarlet Queen swung a curved wake as I turned her. And her bow spread and the figurehead beneath bowed to the crescent of sun that was climbing out of the ocean horizon. Ah, it's a great morning, Skipper. Yeah, I guess we'll keep it, Red. Ah, it was a wonderful port. Lots of interesting people. The best the Orient, Texas, and Shreveport have to offer. <laughs> yeah. Wish I could make up my mind whether Miriam was stupid and honest or smart and crooked. Well, she's the only one who made a profit. That sounds smart to me. But the way she made it doesn't. And anybody who'd paint pictures like that warlord at rest. Yeah. What a tame. <laughs> yeah, Mangan can have it. Huh? I'll settle for hours. I'm kind of stuck on it myself. Here, Skipper. To the Queen? To the Scarlet Queen. After you, mate. After you. Log entry. The Catch Scarlet Queen. 5.30 p.m. Wind, fresh to moderate. Sky overcast. Sea cresting with high cross swell. Mainsail and mizzen reefed. Ship secure for night. Signed, Philip Carney. Master. The Voyage of the Scarlet Queen has come to you through the worldwide facilities of the United States Armed Forces Radio and Television Service. 